So you mentioned a minute ago, and, and you know I'm always a sucker to talk about the team and how important that is as far as anything goes. So in your practice, talk about how the imaging and the team kind of work together and their role with that. Well, you know, what I've found in my time in practice is I think the secret to success, at least for me, it is find good people, let them do what they do, and just get out of their way and let them do it. And so, um, you know, when, when people come in like, okay, today, another good example. And I love being able to tell people, you know, like, this happened today or this happened yesterday. And today, we had a, a lady come in and she had fractured an all porcelain crown and she needs to have a new crown done. So, you know, she comes in and she thought she chipped a tooth. You know, she couldn't, she couldn't tell and she didn't know, um, you know, that the tooth had a crown on it. But anyway, so she comes in and before I even take a look at the patient, my dental assistant has gone in and taken several intraoral photos of the tooth. And, you know, so she then shows them to the patient. Um, I happened to be at my desk in my office doing something. And so she came in and she said, okay, I got the pictures taken. And, and of course, I, you know, bring them up at my desk and I look at them and review them. And I was like, yep, absolutely. You know, broken porcelain needs a new crown. So I go in and I told the patient, I said, I do want to look at the tooth, but I can tell you just from what I've seen already that, you know, we're going to have to do a new crown on this tooth. And, you know, she said, oh, so you, you know, you looked at it before you came in. And I said, yep, that's the joy of everything being digital is that once those pictures are in the system, you know, I can look them, you know, look at them anywhere. And so I looked at them from my desk and, you know, number one, she was impressed by that, even though she's been a patient a long time. But number two, it sped the process up. Um, the other thing is, you know, with uh, with hygiene, I have three hygienists, and we run, you know, three hygiene chairs on a regular basis. And so, when I go in to do an exam on a patient, the hygienists have already, you know, if there's anything to show a patient on the radiographs, they've already shown them the radiographs and shown them the problem. Uh, if there's, you know, something that they can educate with on an intraoral photo, they've already done that. If, you know, they're scanning a mouth and, and with visual caries detection systems and they see something there, well, they're going to take that and, you know, drag that over to the patient's screen and show it to them. So from a standpoint of, I think, believability, patients understand that, you know, the, the hygienist is looking out for their, their welfare. And I think, once again, it becomes third-party uh, verification of what they need. You know, nobody ever makes the joke to the hygienist that they want new golf clubs. You know, they always make that joke to the doctor. Um, and, and so when I come in, the great thing from a time-saving standpoint is I don't have to really go over all that stuff. I come in, and the hygienist will say, okay, we reviewed the radiographs. I, I showed them some intraoral pictures, and we spent a little time looking at tooth number three because it's got those big cracks in it. And, you know, there's a couple of areas of decay on the upper left, and I showed them, you know, the, uh, the caries detection images of those. And, you know, so I sit down, I do my exam, and then I say to the patient, you know, do you have any questions? That's always how I try and end my, my hygiene exams. And it's just really not uncommon at all for the patient to say, no, I've got no questions. I mean, you know, she showed me the pictures. It's, uh, you know, it's fairly self-explanatory. I'm, you know, I understand. I'm good to, good to go. I'm ready to schedule. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, it's a great time saver because when you're running three tiers of hygiene and then trying to do dentistry as well, you know, that can be difficult and that can be time consuming. And so, you know, I like to take adequate time with my hygiene patients but the visual part of it is already done for me, so I don't have to spend that time talking about their problems. You know, the hygienists have already educated about the problems and shown the, the you know, whatever they need as far as visual stuff. So I just come in, confirm what they've said, and, you know, do a regular exam so it doesn't take me that long. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, a couple of areas of imaging that I'd like you to focus on just for a couple of minutes here. Uh, let's talk first about the mobile imaging and kind of where you see that currently and how it can help practices and maybe where you see it going in the near future. Well, you know, 
there's two ways to look at mobile imaging. I mean, number one is the idea of being portable in the office, you know, and that comes from, you know, iPads and, and that sort of thing. And, and some people are, are using, um, you know, login services like logmein.com or, or uh, you know, go to my PC and they actually, they make apps for that that will go on iPads. And so some people are installing those on the iPad and then literally, you know, controlling a computer on the network from the iPad and, you know, running whatever they're running, you know, if it, you know whatever your practice management software happens to be, um, you know, they'll have that running and then they can literally, you know, control the PC and you know, open images and such and show those to people on an iPad rather than having the dual monitor set up. Uh, or if you have something like Dexus Go, if you're a Dexus user, Dexus Go is a free app and it puts the power of all that Dexus imaging into the iPad. So any picture that is in your Dexus database can be uh, accessed over the iPad from the Dexus Go app. So with that system and that setup, you don't need to have control of a PC. You literally have access to your Dexus images and everything right from the iPad. And then the other part of mobile imaging is the idea of, you know, being able to either access your images when you're not in the office, or there are uh, a couple of companies out there working on things that will allow patients to take an image of a tooth um, you know, with a, a, a camera in their phone and then be able to send that to you. And, you know, it, it, they're out of town, they break a tooth, they, you know, they take a picture, they send it to you, what do you think? How soon should I schedule? Those sort of things. And because, you know, you can actually see what's going on, um, you can give them a better idea of you know, what they're looking for in the future. So I think the world is going mobile. Um, the stats that I've seen show that and this is an amazing number to me, 97.7% of smartphone users have their phone within an arm's reach 24-7. And that just stuns me because, I mean, I'm a diehard geek and even I'm not that bad. But my phone charges in my kitchen. Now my wife, and, and she's sort of the one that didn't really want to go the smartphone, you know, and has always been sort of analog. I tease her about it. But, you know, she uses the phone for her alarm clock. And so she is one of those people where the phone is almost always with her. And so as that happens, as more and more people go to always having that mobile device with them, mobile imaging is just going to become more and more common. It just goes with the territory. Yeah, I've got to admit that right here charging, you know, so uh, it's uh, it gets usually maybe two feet away from me, you know, so. <laughs> and, exactly. you know, and, and great points about the mobile, and we're now getting to the point with with uh, imaging that it's not just accessing it from anywhere. It's that you can actually take the imaging with you almost, and you know, like the Nomad. I mean, what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's one of those things. You know, no matter if you're in the practice or you're out on a mission trip or wherever, you know, we now have the capability to do, to do uh, imaging that way as well. Yeah, portable x-ray as far as, you know, being able to use the Nomad. Um, the Nomad is a really amazing device. Um, you know, it is a portable handheld x-ray system, and it does away with the need to actually buy and install an x-ray tube, you know, ahead in your office to, you know, to take x-rays. So in an office, like if I was a young dentist and I was setting up a practice, you know, Nomad would be a must-have because it allows you the flexibility of taking the radiographs anywhere. And so if you set up, you know, and you're, you're young and starting out and you set up a two-room office, you know, you might be able to set it up and have, a, you know, a pass-through central cabinet that you could get a, uh, an extra head, you know, into both rooms. But let's say now you've expanded, you know, your practice is, is starting to grow and you put a third operatory in, well, you know, do you now have to buy another x-ray head? Well, in the traditional world, yeah, you would. But if you have a nomad, you know, the nomad can be used in the first two ops and in the third op. So if I was a young dentist starting out, 
I wouldn't look at buying an x-ray head that attaches to cabinetry anymore. I'm looking at Nomad because, you know, it replaces that x-ray head that's attached to the cabinets. I can use it, you know, in that scenario I gave you, I can use it in one and two all I want. And then as I grow and I put in op three, then we just, you know, we just carry it over to op three. I mean, the thing looks like a ray gun for lack of a better description. And you can just move it around. I mean, it's easy to use. It's light enough that women can use it. Uh, you know, without a problem, and it, you know, the the radiation and everything is shielded, so, and, and as you said, you can take it on mission trips, so no matter where you are, as long as you have the ability with, you know, either film on a mission trip maybe, or with a laptop and a sensor, anywhere that you can take an x-ray, you can take an x-ray using Nomad, and you certainly can't do that with one of these large x-ray heads that requires being attached to something. And those things are heavy. So last question I'm going to throw at you tonight, and okay. it's one of those that, that you and I have discussed on several occasions. It's kind of that that whole cone beam 3D future of, you know, how it's being used now. How do you kind of see the world of 3D and cone beam moving forward in as far as imaging in the dental practice? Well, I, I see it right now as, uh, for a while, radiation was a concern, and people were concerned about the dosages of radiation. Now, I never was, because the dosages of radiation that you get from a cone beam scan, uh, if you take what I consider a normal scan, um, and that's one without a lot of detail that you know shows you the big pictures of what you want to see, and that would be ideal for things like you know, TMJ and implants, uh, extractions, uh, airway management, and you know, and, and checking out the airway for for sleep apnea kind of things. All you know, that would be the kind of thing that you would take a standard resolution with. And that standard resolution really isn't very high radiation. It's a little bit more than a digital pan, but not much. And for the information you get from a digital pan versus a cone beam scan, you know, when you can pick up a patient's head, and this is literally what I say to my patients, I can pick up your head, hold it in the palm of my hand, and I can look at you in any direction I want to, take you apart and look at you piece by piece, that gives me tons more information about you than I get just on a flat panoramic. Then you bring in things like the ICAT Flex, and the ICAT Flex is a, a cone beam machine that allows you to now take an image with less radiation than a digital pan. So what we're going to see is we're going to see radiation dosages continue to drop. And as they do, I look for the future that we won't be taking, you know, FMX as much. We won't be taking panoramics much. I look upon the future as being um, you know, when people come in, if you have a cone beam unit in your office, the standard procedure will be you will take a cone beam image and then you will take bite wings. And, and the reason for the bite wings is the bite wings are still going to be, for me, the gold standard of looking interproximally. You can sort of look interproximally with a cone beam, but not as well as you can with a bite wing. And there are some limitations with cone beam as far as being around metal restorations and, and such that do cause a little imaging, a few halos and some other things that, that don't allow you to see what you can see with a bite wing. But I really think that as far as like the standard of care, it's not there yet. But I do think before I retire that you will see, the you know, whether it's the majority of practices or not, I don't know. But we will see people taking cone beam images on a, a routine basis, maybe every three to five years, like we take a pan, and considering that the equivalent of that, because the dosage will be the same or lower, and you get so much more information that, you know, once you get to the point where it's either the same or lower radiation, it's a slap yourself on the forehead, no brainer, to think that I'd much rather have tons of information than one little piece of information. 